ಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ನು ಸೇದಸಾಧನ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನೀರವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಕಾರ್ಯು ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸಹಿತ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಗಣಾಧಿಪತ ಕುಂದೇಂದು ತುಷಾರಹಾರಧವಲ ಯಾಶುಭ್ರವಸ್ತ್ರವೃತ ಯೀಣಾವರದಂಡಮಂಡಿತಕರ ಯ್ವೇತಪದ್ಮಸನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಚ್ಯುತ ಶಂಕರ ಪ್ರಭೃತಿರ್ಭಿರ್ದೈ ಸದಾ ವಂದಿ ಸಾತು ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಭಗವತಿ ನಿಶೇಷಾಡ್ಯಪ ಗುರುರ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ Good evening dear friends This whole weekend we will share together and explore together pranayama Pranayama is a very very ancient breathing exercise but I don't want to reduce pranayama only to the breathing exercise or respiratory exercise it is more than that prana means vital breath the life force and ayama means to stretch so normally we breathe 15 to 20 respiration per minute when we are in a rush 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 our rate of respiration goes high up to 20 25 so we waste our pranic vibration pranic energy in the rush in the anxiety in the anger fear all these emotion they alter our rate of respiration and the length of the respiration 
because our respiration is partly conscious. If you pay attention, you are conscious of your respiration, you are breathing. And most of the time, it is unconscious. We are not aware of our breath. So one meaning of pranayama is bring awareness to the breath. The beauty of awareness, when you breathe with awareness, it brings rhythm, it brings regularity and regular rhythmic breath is a happy cheerful mind. So there is a deep connection between the mind and the breath. So what is prana? Prana is a vital breath, the life force. So, prana is a life force created by union of purusha and prakriti. So, purusha is universal consciousness. Purusha is a very specific Sanskrit word. And prakriti. Prakriti is primordial matter. And Purusha is a conscious principle. So before creation of universe, Purusha and Prakriti were merged together. There was neither light nor darkness. It is called Dhum Dhumakar, twilight. In the twilight, there is only pure awareness. That is why you should wake up early morning before sunrise and just go for a walk. In that twilight, you see somebody is there, but there is no recognition. You don't know whether he is your friend or neighbor, who knows? Because in the twilight, there is pure perception without recognition. That perception without recognition is prana. I am giving you many, many definitions of prana. Perception with recognition is mind, the buddhi, the chitta. Unless you have experience, there is no recognition. But in twilight, there is pure awareness no recognition, no nama, no rupa, no form, nothing. That state was there before creation of universe. That was only Brahma state. And there is a Big Bang theory. There is a profound energy came and Big Bang happened. That Big Bang is the explosion of cosmic sound, that is Om. Om is the vibration of prana, that is why in this sutra, Rugveda, they say prana is a life force created by the union of Purusha and Prakriti. So Purusha, Purav Shete Iti Saha Purushaha. Pura means city, like Kanpur, Pandarpur, Singapur. Pur means city. And in Sanskrit, Purav is Saptami, in the city. Purav Shetek Iti Saha Purusha. Means that which dwells within the city of senses, which is body. The human body is called city of senses. Indriya Grama. Santa Ganeshwar Mauli from Maharashtra. He was highly enlightened soul. He wrote commentary on Bhagavad Gita at the age of 16. And he took Mahasamadhi, he took Alai Samadhi in a cave at the age of 21. What a clarity, what a beauty, what a creativity is there in his writing commentary on Bhagavad Gita. That is called Bhavartha Deepika Gyaneshwari. So, Santa Ganeshwar called this body as Indriya Grama. Grama means town. 
village. Many, many houses come together to create a village. Similarly, our body is a village, village of cities. The five Jnanendriya, five Karmendriya, five Atendriya. All this is Indriya Grama. That's why it is called Indriya Pura. Purau Shete Iti Saha Purushaha. That which dwells within the city of senses, that is consciousness, that is Purusha. And Prakruti is the primordial matter. It is your genetic code. So, Prakruti and Purusha both are eternal, timeless, divine existence. And this whole universe is a creation of Purusha and Prakruti. At the moment of creation, there was a cosmic throbbing, cosmic vibration. That is cosmic prana, Ambara Piyusha. So, Ambara means Akash, space. And Piyusha means nectar, Amrut, Ambrosia. Piyush. So, the cosmic Piyush, the cosmic ambrosia, which gives life to every creature. So, I am just reading the translation of this Rugvedic Sukta. Prana is a life force created by union of Purusha and Prakruti. Prana is a bridge between body, mind and the soul. Soul is conscious principle. Body is a matter. And mind is bridge between body and consciousness. But body, mind, consciousness, sattvam, atma, sharirancha, this is a trinity of life and bridge is prana. Prane bhutancha bhavyancha, prane sarvam pratishthitam, pranu hi bhagavan matarishwaram. Prana is bhagavan, bhavati creation, ga gamati sustenance. No nayati destruction. So creation, sustenance and destruction, that energy is Bhagavan. Same thing with God, G-O-D, God, G is generator, creation. O is operator, sustenance and D is a death, destruction. So there is no life without death. Life and death go together. Moment we are born, we are born with death. If you live for 80 years, means death was living with you for 80 years. If you live for 90 years, 105 years, means death was living with you for 105 years. Because living is a process, similarly dying is a process. At this moment, some red blood cells are destroyed in your liver. You never cry for them. Oh, my cute little red blood cell, you gave me such a great oxygen and now you are dying, you are destroyed in the liver. In your body, there is wear and tear, creation and destruction is going on. There is erythrogenesis, creation of red blood cells going on. New cells are created and that created cell sustain in the body through metabolic activity and then catabolism, deterioration, degeneration, destruction and the death. So this is a process of death. So dying is a process and living is a process. The bridge between dying and living is prana. So that Vedic Sukta says, Prana is a bridge between birth and death. All over the universe, prana is present in macrocosm in the universe and in the microcosm in the body. If you go to the cellular level, at, at the level of the cell, suppose this is one single cell and there is another cell And according to Ayurvedic concept, every cell has these three important factors. Ojas, the cellular immune mechanism. Tejas, the cellular metabolic activity. And Prana, the cellular communication. Every cell has an intelligent. Every cell has a cellular choice, selectivity. Plasma cell choose plasma protein. 
red blood cell choose iron, folic acid, B12. Likewise, multinucleated muscle cell, they choose protein. This cellular choice is stages. Cellular intelligence is stages. Ojas is cellular immune mechanism. And there is a continuous flow between these two cells. That flow of intelligence, that flow of communication is prana. Prane bhutancha bhavyancha, prane sarvam pratishthitam, prano hi bhagavan matarishwaram. So prana is present in a very subtle form in a micro cell. That is microcosm. And macrocosm, the universe. Prana shines like a sun. Sun is a burning ball of dynamic energy. Hydrogen bombs are explored on the sun every moment and that yield heat and light and energy and radiation. So according to Veda, sun is a burning ball of prana. So, prana shines like a sun, rains like a cloud, flows like a river, waves like an ocean and prana rules like Lord Indra in Vedic philosophy. All demigods, even Agni is God, Agni Devata. Vayu is God, Vayu Devata. Water is God, Jala Devata. Varuna, Varuna is a water Devata. So in ancient Veda, they speak about deity Devata. And there are devata, earth is a mother, earth is also devata, ocean is devata. So, the king of all devata is Indra. And Indra is Indriya, the doors of perception. So, your body has cognitive function, sensory function, motor function. So, sense organ, Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasagandha, these cognitive functions are governed by sensory perception. And motor action, sensory stimuli, motor action, that motor action is also part of karma indriya. But all these indriyas are ruled by main deity, that is called Indra. Indra is mind, Devendra. So mind is Indra, that there is a cosmic mind, universal mind, and there is individual mind. So, prana rules like a Lord Indra. Prana enters the body through the consciousness, operates the action of the mind. Prana is responsible for creation of thought, feelings and emotion. Prana holds all particles of the five kosha, annamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha, manomaya kosha, jnana vijnanamaya kosha, that kosha system is operating together because of prana. Life begins with the first breath and life ends with the last breath. So prana holds the life and consciousness in the body. So there is a cosmic prana and there is individual prana. So this is from Rigveda. So prana at cellular level governs cellular life. You can remove the cell from the body, mount it under high power microscope, you can see the life activity. Chromosomes are moving, cytoplasm is moving and soon cell will die under your microscope because cell doesn't receive prana. That means there is some energy which keep the cell alive in the plasma, in the serum, in the, through the interstitial fluid. That is called prana, according to ancient Vedic science. So, prana is a life energy. Prana is responsible for psychophysiological activity and According to Ayurveda, prana is a life force, life energy, it is the breath. Yontah pravisham amavacham imam prasuptam 
संजीवयथ्य किल शक्ति धरहा स्वधाम्ना अन्याम च हस्त चरण श्रवण त्वगादिन प्राण नमो भगवते पुरुषाय तुभ्यम ओ प्राण यू आर भगवान यू आर द क्रिएटर आई सैल्यूट टू दी यू आर द प्राण यू आर द पुरुष योंत प्रवेश मम वाच मिमाम प्रसुप्ताम यू एंटर इन टू माई अनस्पोकन वर्ल्ड according to ayurveda and according to vedic science belly button there is a cilia ganglion it is called abdominal brain any impulse coming there it is answered there each time brain is not tortured so celiac plexus is there and celiac plexus has a pranic vibration sympathetic and parasympathetic impulses they are coming there so this prana at the belly button then prana gives stimulation to the diaphragm moment prana at belly button becomes samana but when it moves upward it become udana so you speak during exhalation you cannot speak during inhalation so yonta pravisha mama vacha mimam prasuptam o prana you enter into my breath you touches my belly button you stimulate my diaphragm and during exhalation the vibration of my unspoken speech comes to the through the diaphragm into the lungs and into the lungs it touches the heart heart means cardiac plexus not that mechanical pump for circulation heart means cardiac plexus then it goes to the cervical plexus throat and vocal cord and there are intrinsic muscles of the vocal cord they constrict and express so this is in vocal speech and when it comes above it is called ab vocal speech then it become guttural kha kha ga ga na then it become palatable ta ta da da na then become dental ta tha da dhana then become labial pa pa ba ba ma ka ka ga 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 cha cha ja ja nya ta tha da dhana ta tha da dhana pa pa ba ba ma ya ra la va sha 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 ha la ksha dnya these are sanskrit alphabet wonderful and they are all connected to the bodily chakra which is very fascinating therefore ayurvedic anatomy ayurvedic physiology is very fascinating we should learn you will surprise that prana through the breath goes down to the belly button as an impulse and that impulse carries the feeling through the movement of the diaphragm during exhalation then all these bronchi bronchioles they exhale the air up to that it is a part of respiratory system but when air comes to the trachea and it passes through the vocal cord then vocal cord epiglottis there is a typical movement and then we say ka kha ga 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 kanthya ka kha ga 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 kanthya cha cha ja ja nya soft palate ta tha da da na hard palate ta tha da da na dental and pa pa ba ba ma le labial so all these varna the group of alphabets they come that is why yonta pravesha mam vacha mimam prasuptam sanjeeva yathya kela shakti dharaha swadhamna o prana you enter into my breath and you express my unspoken word into spoken word this is a beautiful thing because without prana we cannot talk then anyam cha hasta charana shravana tvagadin hasta charana hands legs hasta charana shravana listening and twag the skin tactile sensation of touch pain temperature is due to prana that is why prana is operating through the jnanindriyani the cognitive faculty prana is operating through the karmendriyani the motor faculty so motor organ sensory organ they all are harmoniously working together because of prana that's why this sutra is very important i am repeating repeating so that one day you will wake up at midnight chanting this sutra <laughs> yonta pravesha mam vacha mimam prasuptam sanjeevayathya kila shakti dharaha swadhamna 
अन्याम च हस्त चरण श्रवण त्वगादीन प्राणानमो भगवते पुरुषाय तुभ्यम ओ प्राणा आई सैल्यूट टू दी आई प्रोस्ट्रेट टू दी बिकॉज ऑफ यू आई एम एग्जिस्टिंग आई एम हियर सो एज लॉन्ग एज रेस्पिरेशन इज गोइंग ऑन पर्सन इज अलाइव बिफोर डॉक्टर डिक्लेयर्स द डेथ ही जस्ट चेक द ब्रेथ नो ब्रेथ देन विद द स्टेथास्कोप ही लिसन टू द हार्ट साउंड Heart sounds are inaudible. Respiration is not felt. Heart sounds are inaudible. Then subtle vibration of prana are reaction of pupil to the light. That is also prana. Moment you put light on the pupil, pupil constrict. That is very subtle vibration of prana. But pupils are dilated, fixed, non-reacting to the light. No heart sounds are heard. No pulse is felt. respiration is gone then doctor says patient is dead these are all doctor is indirectly checking the signs of vital signs of life and vital signs of life are the vital signs of prana but they don't want to use that word i don't know why <laughs> they don't like to use the oh, prana wrong no. we, we don't want that we want everything to be physical which is cute i like that we should be very physical very mechanical so you will see that prana is operating in the body because of different systems prano prana adi bhedat panchatma vayu pranotra murudagah murdha means head murdni pranotra murudagah urak kantacharah बुद्धि इंद्रिय चित्रध्रुक स्थिव नक्षवत उदगार निश्वास अन्न प्रवेश कृत मीन्स इन द हाइपोथैलामस देर इज अ रेस्पिरेटरी सेंटर देर इज अ कार्डियक सेंटर देर इज अ कॉफिंग सेंटर यॉनिंग सेंटर हाइपोथैलामस इज अ मेन स्विच बोर्ड देर इज अ प्राण ऑपरेटिंग and prana operates at hypothalamus regulate temperature prana governs cardiac activity prana governs respiration so this prana in the crown chakra special vayu governs higher cerebral functions both cerebral cortical area and medullary area so this is the prana udan just now i share with you udan moves upward so through the throat the movement of the intrinsic muscles of the vocal cord we speak then there is special vayu in the heart pacemaker sa node and av node this is neuroelectrical impulse that comes to the pacemaker sa node and av node and the impulse from av node goes to the bundle of his when auricular contract ventricular dilate ventricular contract auricular dilate lub dub lub dub lub dub these movements are governed by synchronization of pran and vyan vyano rudisthitah krishna deha charah means vyan stays in the heart and governs circulation arterial and venous so this is a special kind of modified prana in the cardiovascular system that is why if you do pranayama you will change your blood pressure you will change your rhythm even person with arrhythmia atrial fibrillation atrial flutter if they do proper pranayama flutter is gone without medicine because prana is the ultimate medicine rasa veera vipak prabhav rasa veera vipak prabhav prabhav is nothing but action on prana or action of prana and that is why this is very interesting prana udana vyan vyan governs circulation samant right from the pyloric area duodenum jejunum ileum up to the ileocecal wall all peristaltic movement of the small intestine and microvilli is governed by those impulse coming to the visceral organ samant samanagni samipastha koshthe charati sarvata 
अन्नम घृणाति पचति विवेचयति मुंचति समान वायु क्रिएट एपिटाइट समान वायु स्टिम्युलेट हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड सिक्रिशन पेप्सिन रेनिन गैस्ट्रिक इंटेंसिक फैक्टर ऑल दैट इज समान एंड समान वेन फूड कम्स देयर समान स्टिम्युलेट द सिक्रेशन ऑफ ऑल दिस देर इज अ डाइजेशन इन द स्टमक डाइजेशन इन द डुआडिनम जेजुनम ऑल जी आई ट्रैक दैट डाइजेस्टिव एक्टिविटी इज गवर्न बाय समान वायु इट इज अग्नि एंड वेन फूड इज वेल डाइजेस्टेड माइक्रो खाइल इज फॉर्म दैट इज आहार रस एन प्रोडक्ट ऑफ डाइजेस्टेड फूड इज आहार रस दैट माइक्रो खाइल इज अ फूड प्रिकर्सर ऑफ ऑल बॉडीली टिश्यू इट इज सेपरेटेड बाय समान फ्रॉम द विलाय एंड इट इज सर्क्युलेटेड सो समान डज न्यूट्रिशन अकॉर्डिंग टू एंशंट वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर देन वेन फूड कम्स टू द सिकम देर इज अ लिटल एपेंडिक्स Now it is lot of people's appendix is gone, but appendix is like a tonsil, abdominal tonsil. We have tonsil here in the throat. We have nasal tonsil, adenoid. Then we have in the gutter, in the laryngopharyngeal space, there is a tonsil, and in abdomen, there is an appendix which is abdominal tonsil. Their job is to destroy the bacteria. When you have appendicitis, means in that war. appendix is defeated appendix surrender to that and you have acute appendicitis attack but that appendix play its role to fight with the bacteria so a cecum is very important organ it is not a pouch from there more absorption happens and according to ayurvedic literature colon is the organ of absorption and all pelvic org- organs sigmoid colon rectum uterus bladder prostate all these are under control of apana which is pelvic plexus sacral plexus they govern when rectum is full then apana vayu stimulate to create mass peristaltic movement then you get desire of defecation this is apan when bladder is full you get desire of micturition urination that is apan menstruation is apan and ejaculation of semen is apan so apan vayu governs activity in the floor in the pelvic floor area saman vayu governs activity in the middle abdomen and vyan vayu through the cardiovascular system and udan vayu respiratory system with vocal cord and prana governs higher cerebral activity but there is only one vayu in the body pran but because of nama sthan kriya maya ye because of change in the function change in the structure same energy neuroelectrical impulse receive different name pran udana vyana samana apan so these are the five types of different aspect functional aspect of pran now i will share with you which is very fascinating very interesting thing okay sir thank you am i boring you i'm sorry this is very i'm to, am i talking too much sanskrit but it is cute you listen and forget it don't worry <laughs> because i'm thinking in sanskrit i learn ayurved in sanskrit it is difficult for me not to use sanskrit if you call medical doctor to speak without using greek and latin word impossible doctor has to use many greek and latin words same thing any ayurvedic clinician physician when he speaks he has to use sanskrit word at least pa vata pitta kapha ojas tejas pran sevan dhatu and rest of the thing now <laughs> this is the diaphragm so the hypothalamus this is the seat of prana diaphragm celiac plexus now the respiration in ayurveda is very fascinating nabhi means belly button 
surface anatomically, if you probe through the nabi, you will go to the celiac plexus. Nabista prana pravanaha sprushtva rut kamalantaran. Here, heart looks like a shy lotus, shy lotus bud. Hmm? And these are a little ramification. So, Nabista prana pravanaha sprushtva rut kamalantaram. Prushtva murudnim agachati. Outer space. This is Vishnu Padam. Vishnu Padam Prokta. Means there is a life energy at the belly button. That life energy at the belly button sends impulse, so exhalation happens. During exhalation, the diaphragm is raised, the ribs collapse, then pressure in the pleura increases and air pushed out. So in this journey, the prana from the belly button goes through the diaphragm through the by touching the heart of the cardiac plexus, then it comes out, it touches the cribriform plate, olfactory, and then it comes out dwadashanta, twelve anguli, like about nine inches away from the nostril. And it's there is a for a fraction of a second there is a stop. In that stop, the prana, your individual prana comes out and meet with the Vishnu Padam Proktam. Padam means feet. It reaches the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. There it takes life energy, you may call oxygen. Huh? And then that is carried back and it goes down to the belly button. Behind the belly button there is another stop. So, there is a natural suspension of breath. Modern physiology says we inhale and air goes into the alveolar. That's very true, there where the gaseous exchange happens. But pranic vibration go down the root of the diaphragm, behind the belly button. So, during inhalation, the cool air goes through the nose, it turned down and Behind the belly button, at the root of the diaphragm, it stops for a fraction of a second. This is very important stop. During that stop, there is gaseous exchange happen. And during exhalation, again, Navista Prana Pavanas, Prashtvarhut Kamalantaram, Vishnu Padam Proktam, means the art of respiration is not mechanical, it is very spiritual. Mechanically, we inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide, which is a physiological function of respiration, everyone knows. But here we are learning from ancient Vedic scripture that God is breathing in every creature. God is breathing in every creature. So when you sit quiet and just watch your breath. Don't interfere with the lungs. Let the lungs do their job. Just sit quiet and add awareness to the breath. When lungs inhale, let them inhale. You just add awareness. When lungs exhale, let them do their function. You don't interfere with your lungs. Just add awareness. So when lungs inhale, the air goes in. And when lungs exhale, air goes out. In that in and out movement, the air is touching somewhere inside the nostril. That is very important. So, just sit quiet and feel the touch of air inside the nostril. The ingoing air has a cool touch and outgoing air has a warm touch. So, first five minutes you sit quiet and pay complete attention inside the nose 
to the touch of air. Lord Krishna calls this Nasagra Drushti. Pay attention to the nose. After five minutes, follow the breath. When lungs inhale, the air goes in, into the nostril. From that touch, it goes inside. Just follow that breath from the nostril into the throat, into trachea, into heart. The energy goes below the diaphragm, at the root of the diaphragm. And there is a natural stop. Stay in that stop for a fraction of a second. And then when you exhale, again follow the breath. Come up from belly button to the diaphragm, to the lungs, heart, trachea, throat, back to the nose. During exhalation, air goes out, go out of the body, nine inches away from the nose, there is a second stop in the outer space. These two stops are very important. In that stop, you exist without breath. In that stop, there is no mind. Because mind is the movement of breath. There is a deep connection between breathing and thinking. Breathing is a physiological part of respiration. Thinking is a psychological part of breathing. So when you sit quiet, watch the breath and stay in the stop, naturally, spontaneously. So in that stop, there is no breath, no prana, no mind, there is no time, because time is a movement of breath. In that gap, in the beginning that gap is only for a fraction of a second. If you practice this natural pranayama, ten minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening and 10 minutes on the bed before you go to sleep. Just sit quiet and watch your breath and stay in the stop. If you like outer stop, very relaxing, enjoy. If you like inner stop, very responsible, enjoy that also. Inner stop is little difficult, outer stop is easy. You will surprise that your time of stop enhances. Within a couple of weeks, you will easily stay in the stop for 20 seconds. By next month, your stop will increase up to 60 seconds, half a minute. And by next nine months, your staff will increase up to 90 seconds, one and a half minute. Don't watch your watch. Just be there. Then what will happen? When your staff goes 90 seconds, you will see the pulsating, throbbing light here at third eye. That light is the light of pure awareness. 
that light is a light of pure consciousness. Because meeting point of consciousness and prana is that gap, that stop. So, this is called Sahaja Pranayama, natural pranayama. Tomorrow, we will learn many different techniques of pranayama. And by doing pranayama, your blood pressure will come down. Your cholesterol will come back to the normal without using Lipitor. If you are taking Lipitor, continue. I am not supposed to tell you, don't take it. I am not qualified to tell you that, don't take it. But, amazing thing will happen because this is a metabolic disorder. High cholesterol is metabolic disorder, diabetes is a metabolic disorder, obesity is a metabolic disorder, high triglyceride is a metabolic disorder. All metabolic disorder can be corrected by pranayama. I am not doing tall chem. I am just sharing with you my last experience of last 30, more than 30 years practicing Ayurveda both in India and here. Just by doing pranayama, very powerful tool to heal. So, what I want to convey on this occasion, I am glad that you all are coming here with a large number. We will have great time together. We will do pranayama together and you will share your experience. Just by doing pranayama, your vital capacity will increase. Not only that, your cholesterol will drop down, it will come back to the normal. If it is already normal, then it will not go below the normal. It will stay there, otherwise you will worry, oh my God, my cholesterol is only 160 and if I do a kapalabhati, it will go down. Then I will get osteoporosis and muscle spasm and no, 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 no. It won't happen because prana knows your prakruti, prana knows your intelligence, prana knows your genetic code. It will maintain your genetic code of DNA. That is the beauty of pranayama. So, this whole process of breathing is very fascinating. Just by doing pranayama, your depression is gone. Because there are certain pranayama, they stimulate your pineal gland. And pineal gland synthesizes tryptophan into serotonin and melatonin. Wow! Just by doing pranayama, you have abandoned melatonin, serotonin and your depression is gone. But we don't want to do tall claim. It is the experience of my client, both in Pune and here in Albuquerque. Just by doing regular pranayama, their cholesterol came back to the normal. Triglyceride came back to the normal. Even sugar, fasting sugar was a little higher than the borderline. It came back to the normal. The whole biochemistry will change just by doing pranayama. And that's why I'm glad there is such a great response to pranayama. Pranayamena sakala vyadi haranam. This is the sutra from Ayurveda. Just by doing pranayama, neurological, psycho, psychological, psychiatric problem, even your metabolic disorder, all this problem will be gradually solved. Pranayamena sakala vyadi haranam. Pranayam can cure almost every disease. Because disease is disturb blood chemistry, disturb your neurochemistry and disturb your physiological functions of these three organization, Vata, Pitta, Kapha. Your Vata, Pitta, Kapha, even Vata is high, Pitta is high, Kapha is high, it will come back to the normal. That is the glory, that is the beauty of Pranayama. So, here we will take a short break and then we will, I will share with you certain other aspect and then we will go into the question and answer. Today, 
is just introduction. Real main menu is tomorrow. We will actually perform pranayama and by performing pranayama you will learn. You learn by doing and whatever you learn you teach other people, other friends. You learn by teaching. So learning go together with teaching and doing. So let us take a little short tea break and we'll come back.